Welcome back to the Alexandrian Codex. I'm Alex. This is, is Terraria. Did I do that bit on the last episode? I don't think I did. Uh, everything's awful. Democracy's a lie, etc., etc. It's fine. Yeah, well, that's the point of... That is, uh... Not the point of history, but that's a major function of history. Is revisionism. Is, uh political work, right, is propaganda. Some of the earliest works of history, of uh, published historical, uh, historical, historical works were propaganda. When Herodotus is writing about the Trojan Wars, he's not writing about it from a perspective of like, uh, this is a unabridged uh, series of events. This is a, man, the Trojans were real pieces of shit, weren't they? Yeah, the Greeks are real heroes for killing those Trojans. Uh, it's it's integral and uh, it's it's just a part of the study of history. But I I don't feel like it takes a well developed mind or a particularly critical mind to go. Wait a minute! Somebody wrote this. Somebody wrote this for a reason. What was their reason for writing this? To me, that seems like a very essential, simple, fundamental question to ask about anything that I'm exposed to. And I realize that we're very intentionally not taught those skill sets in the majority of public school systems. Hell, I mean, I, I wasn't taught that way in church, I'll tell you that. I went to Catholic school for a number of years, so I, I very much understand being educated to just believe what you read and that you will be punished if you don't. Trust me, I, I had some run-ins when I went to Catholic school. but. Come on! Hysterical works. Hysterical works. Yeah, I oftentimes in the majority of history, when something's been written down, it's been written down for a reason. Typically because a king or queen or emperor or empress or regents or regency council or whoever the fuck else wanted to talk about how great they were and how great this thing they did was and so they'd be remembered forever or to talk about how good they are so people would forget about the bad things that they did. Oh yeah, I am lucky. Also, God, this, this mod is amazing. Otherwise I would have ignored bait fish. We got good luck. I think we only have like one geode. After I'm done watering the plants, I'll go check that out. This is amazing. Uh, I'll be real, when I when 9-11 uh, happened, I was, well, that was, it's 2018, that was 17 years ago. Holy shit, I was 9 years old? Yeah. I, I went to school. I, I lived in Connecticut at the time. I lived very close to New York. I lived so close that you could see smoke rising on the horizon. <laughs> and uh, I had plenty of friends who had family and friends who lived and worked in New York in and around the Twin Towers. So I was not in an unaffected community. It wasn't some distance thing. It wasn't just some thing I heard about, but wasn't around for. It was in my backyard, metaphorically, slash not so metaphorically. My initial reaction, because I was a good little American, being taught in the public school system, was that we must be going to war. My The first thing I said to my mom, I remember when I said, is, who are we going to bomb? <laughs> or, who are we invading? Something like that. Because naturally, that's what we were going to do. I, there was no doubt in my mind that that was what the necessary course of action was. And in retrospect, obviously, I was completely wrong. The point of that story is to illustrate I am not immune to the lenses by which I was educated and taught. I am not separate from the society in which I exist, and I don't claim to be or pretend to be. However, it is possible and perhaps necessary to become a well-rounded human being, to become a functional adult, to become a critical thinking, high-functioning individual. I believe it's necessary 
to learn to question things that we take for granted, to question things that we even hold very true and very dear to ourselves, to question things that we identify with, and continue to critically engage with new ideas and new possibilities in order to live full, healthy lives and to engage with the world around us in a effective and nuanced way. You can't go into the logs, it'd be cool. Log that is hollow. Why are you tell me log that is hollow? <laughs> Can you go into the hollow log? What hollow log? This? No, you can't go into this. This is hardwood. Uh, hardwood can only be broken with a higher level of axe. And we don't have that yet. That's just to indicate that that piece of wood will give us, uh, it will give us some hard wood if we, if we tap it. But we're not there yet. <laughs> it's exactly human size. Well, it depends on the size of the human. It would be, it'd be fun. I don't really know what you would accomplish by crawling around in it. If you want me to do some log crawling, I need to go play some Ocarina of Time. I'm not ready to ask higher level questions. You got me! Alright, cool! First geode I broke open and I got Iridium out of it. Can I have more, please? More? I don't think you can actually get Iridium out of these basic bitch geodes. Anytime I see fun spelled F-U-N capitalizer as an acronym, I definitely think Spongebob. Uh, it's an episode where Spongebob is trying to teach Plankton the meaning of fun and friendship. Uh, Plankton's response is F is for fire burning all the buildings, U is for uranium bombs, No is for no survivors. Down in the deep blue sea? I think those are the lyrics. F is for fire, burning all the buildings, new N is for nuclear bombs, no, 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 U is for uranium bombs, N is for no survivors, down in the deep blue sea, something like that. Every fucking time, I've only ever seen that episode once. I gotta say, Spongebob, not my favorite show. I didn't watch it that often when it was new, and I would not go and rewatch it now. That's some culturally impactful shit. I I gotta hand it to them. They uh they left a mark. And ultimately, I feel that that's the highest praise I can give an artist or a piece of artistic work is that you you affected the society around you in a significant way. What do you got? I got a skeleton. Sloth skeleton ribs, a boot block, excellent, some crappy directions, <laughs> directions, yep, yep, directions are what you put in your home, decorations, you got some crappy decorations. <laughs> I've gone there, I have this spoon, you want this shitty rusty spoon? Yo, uh, so I learned something last night, and this isn't really anything impressive, but if you are interested in cleaning rust off of something, and it's small enough that you can soak it, take that thing, put it in white vinegar, and let it sit for like 6 to 12 hours. It's magical. It's fucking magical. White vinegar is really good at cleaning shit. I hate how it smells. I fucking hate how it smells, but it's so good. Use coke. Well, you can That might work. Coke gets rid of all rust. It yeah, but most people will have... <laughs> Sorry, you said use coke and I was imagining cocaine. This way. <laughs> cocaine might work, but... <laughs> uh, uh, that's a fun mental image. Oh, yeah, 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 Coca-Cola works well, too. Yeah, you're right, you're right. Yeah, um, yeah, Coke can actually not, not that, not that 
not the drug. If you're like me, every time you hear Coke, you just immediately think, ah, cocaine. No, Coca-Cola does not actually clean things, or it does a decent job at cleaning things. It's highly acidic, like, incredibly acidic. Coke gets rid of all the rust and tooth enamel. What are you doing that cocaine's ending up in your mouth? Well, okay. But, it, it, God damn it, you meant Coke is in Coca-Cola. Ah, what is wrong with me? <laughs> yes, Coca-Cola can eat away tooth enamel. You're correct. I... Boy needs therapy. Read an innocent word, Coke. You know what, Coca-Cola, I'm not apologizing for this. Coca-Cola was named after cocaine. So I'm right. <laughs> Do I have a cocaine problem? Cocaine is vitamins for hotel soap? Cocaine is vitamins for hotel soap. Cocaine is vitamins for hotel soap. Cocaine. Ah, oh, god damn it. Uh, it's it's a Dr. Tran reference. Dr. Fran, fan, snap, snap, it's called Dr. Fran, fan, cocaine. No, 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 it's a Dr. Tran episode. Go watch Dr. Tran if you don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. It's a little hotel soap. The hotel soap eats cocaine. Doesn't snort cocaine, doesn't use cocaine as an intoxicant, but eats it as a vital source of vitamins and nutrients. <laughs> Just keep saying vitamins as hotel is <laughs> God damn it. Cocaine is vitamins for hotel soap over and over. I know it's funny to me, and it's funny to you, and I'm dumb and came into the mine without going to the uh god that's gonna make no sense out of out of context is it that little clip i just played it's fine it's fine go go watch dr tran pause the video open up a new tab go watch the entirety of the dr tran series it will not be a waste of your time it's a much better use of your time than watching this and i say that from the bottom of my heart you will have a more socially culturally enriching experience watching Dr. Tran than you will this episode of Stardew Valley. Or really most episodes of Stardew Valley. Oh, that was much louder than I was expecting. <laughs> My ears are not happy. All I wanted was like the six second soundbite of cocaine's cocaine is vitamins for Dr. So. Cocaine is Vitamins for hotel soap. My brain... I'm healthier, but my brain is not back up to 100%. I walked into work, uh, three days ago? Something like that. There was a show going on, so I was quiet. Quietly trying to enter our back room area, and the entire stage just smelled like popcorn. So I open up the door, and I say, it smells like peanut butter. And fucking nobody corrected me for about 10 minutes. Everybody just looked at me like I was crazy, didn't say anything, and just continued on their way. It wasn't until I clocked in, started filing some paperwork, I'm like, oh, I meant popcorn. People were like, oh, that makes sense. I, what the fuck? <laughs> Swear to God, I... If I have a stroke, no one will be able to tell the difference. Canada's, uh, finally 37 million people? Alright, hold on, hold on. Is this joke gonna work? Yeah, Canada's almost as big as California. California has a population of 39.5 million, so congrats on being almost as big as one of our states. Join us, Canada. Replace our government, Canada. Please, God, annex us. I know hockey season just started, and that's probably more important than helping out your beleaguered southern neighbors, but please, God, save us, Canada. 
<laughs> size doesn't matter. Well, you're the one that brought it up. <laughs> size doesn't matter, but every fucking time a Canadian's in a conversation talking about uh, largest countries in the world, they'll helpfully remind us that Canada is larger in terms of geographic area than the United States, or at least comparable to it. Uh, United States area... No, not area codes. Uh, the United States is 3.79 million miles, whereas Canada is 3.855 million miles. So size doesn't matter when it comes to population, but when it comes to total square area, or total acreage, it matters. Really? You didn't really- well, uh, the reason Canada is that much uh, less populated is how far north it is. The most arable land in Canada is pretty close to the border, and only in certain areas pretty close to the border. It's not a detraction in any way of Canada. Y'all got a bunch of cold fucking stuff up there. It's great for mining. Canada's sitting on some sweet, sweet fucking tar sands that the Republicans would love for you to just give us. Canada has great expanses of unexploited wilderness and natural beauty. We, uh, we don't have so much of that anymore. Also, French people. We have a few in Louisiana. But that's about it. A few in Mississippi as well, but... Man, I wish Canada were full of sentient ice golems. That'd be dope. That'd be cool. I, it'd be horrifying, but it'd be cool. Yeah, Bat, if you could just, like, fuck off. I found the, the ladder down a while ago. Why did I just go on a little bend down? Alright, we're out. I'm out. I don't have time for this. Nope. Nope. Bye. Bye, Felicia. Okay. Girl, bye. I remember... God, I was, like, 13 when I had my first conversation with patriotic Canadians that were, like, very aggressively teaching me about how much larger Canada was than the United States. And, like, I, I had not in my life encountered Canadian nationalists before then, but changed my outlook of the country <laughs> pretty greatly. I'm like, ah, the United States is bigger than Canada. No! No, not true! Brazil is also pretty big. Not not the not quite in the same scale. Let's see if I, I got this right. Russia is in terms of total square acreage the largest, and then then Canada, right? Then the United States, then Australia, Brazil, China. Is that right? I might not be right. Hold on. Let's see. Let's see how how long I am. No, oh, no. No, how wrong I am. Largest countries by area. India, I forgot about India. It's Russia, Canada, United States, China, Brazil, Australia, India. So I got most of these kind of right. Who's after India? Argentina, Kazakhstan, Algeria. Algeria is really that bad? They have a lot of desert, that's true. Number four. What? Number four? After. Now we're number three. The United States is bigger than China, but smaller than Canada. Occupies 9.63 million square kilometers. Canada occupies 9.94 million square kilometers. China occupies 9.6 million square kilometers. However, if you did include Tibet in that number, China might be larger. Sorry, not Tibet, not Tibet, not Tibet. Tibet is legally a part of China. I meant Taiwan. I meant Taiwan and maybe other disputed Iowan territories that might just push the number up large enough to make China <laughs> larger than the United States. Coastline is counted on the United States, but not on China, and by that you mean territory waters? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's, that's why we're talking about. If they had Tibet... Why do I keep saying Tibet instead of Taiwan? If you if China had Taiwan recognized, if the People's Republic had Taiwan as being uh, 
internationally recognized as being part of their country, that would probably change it significantly. As well as the other contested island nations. It's weird, yeah. Uh, so, um, in map making, coastlines are a really fucking weird thing. Because even on the very best maps, coasts aren't 100% accurate, or even, you know, close to being accurate. Because, how do you how do you accurately map a coastline? It changes every day. Not much, but a little bit every day. And a lot of coasts are pretty inconsistent sometimes. How do you- it's like, how many straight lines can you draw in a circle? An infinite amount. Uh, you can draw an infinite amount of straight lines and you still won't quite get a circle. You start running into that problem with coasts because they tend to be rounded. Getting an exact measurement of a coast, basically every time you get a tighter and tighter measurement of it, it gets slightly larger and slightly larger and slightly larger. And because the United States has so many coastlines and the USGS is so... Uh, consistent in its measuring of our coastlines and things. Yeah. As you decrease the size of the measuring tool, the coast... Yeah, the country's coast approaches... Ap approaches, approaches, and turn it. Infinite. Eternity. God, I can't talk. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. It's the same way that if you try to measure the exact circumference of a circle using a flat edge, the smaller and smaller increments you get into, the number will just keep getting higher. So, yeah, it's a little no surprise that Canada, with a shit ton of coast, and the United States, with a shit ton of coast, are pretty high up there. And that Russia number one, because Russia's got a shit ton of coasts. Yeah, geometry's weird. <laughs> it's, it's the reason perfect circles do not exist. Because they, they kind of can't. A perfect circle can sort of exist, but not in nature. And I don't, I don't think it's actually possible to make a perfect circle, right? Down to an atomic level. You can get really fucking close, but you can't quite do it. And physics, physics is weird like that. Geometry is weird like that. Like, uh, oh god, what what is it that you um, you can measure the position of something or its velocity, but you can't measure both at the same time because if you observe something, you change its velocity, and if you observe its velocity, you change its position. What is that? Is that the uncertainty principle? No. Yep. Pi never ends. Or are we? Or we're wrong about pi. It would be great if we encountered uh, a much more advanced alien species that's just like, oh, your basic fundamental understanding of geometry is like real wrong. Yeah, I was much more into physics back when I thought I was going to study it in school. I took physics courses in high school, I studied physics on my own through my undergrad, but really after about 2012 I stopped learning new things about physics. I learned a lot about uh, astrophysics and like star formation and stellar uh, cartography, stellar spectroscopy? Oh god, that's not right. Uh, uh, the word is used to describe varieties in color, uh, the spectral classes of stars, can't remember what exactly that study is called, but I, I learned a lot about that in more recent years, but that's about all the physics I've been studying recently. Where's your fallout tactics? Oh, it's, it's sitting on my desktop. Sitting on my desktop unplayed until I find good tutorials for it that aren't really poorly implemented. I, I, I don't know if I can play it. Honestly, I tried. I've tried off stream as well. But the the control scheme I hate it. 
I'm not I'm not saying that to be hateful, but I really don't like it. Like I really don't like it. It seems like such a bad decision to be like, hmm, alright, so we have two models here, turn-based tactics and real-time tactics. What if we took the worst qualities of both, combined them, and made a possible real-time tactics game that only pauses sometimes, but also is real-time and... Oh, uh, yeah, just... It's... <laughs> I... I'll have to- I- I want to play it. I want to beat it, just because it's a Fallout game I haven't played. But, mm, Speaking of Fallout games I haven't played, I'm not playing Fallout 76. I'm not streaming Fallout 76. If I buy Fallout 76, it's only going to be on severe discount. I'm not playing any MMO Bethesda games. Elder Scrolls Online fucking sucked. It, it, seriously, it was garbage. I beta tested that game. It was garbage then and it's garbage now. I'm not playing that and I'm not playing 76. The gameplay footage I've seen of Fallout 76 is like, ah, ah, it's like a Fallout 4 mod. Everybody has the same shitty third person models and animations and it just looks so bad. It looks so bad. Yep, yeah, no, not doing it. A genius, either or. I feel the same way about Drunk Alex the smartest and stupidest man I know. Yeah. I don't... God, what? What design committee was like, hmm, you know, the most popular thing about the Fallout franchise consistently are the role-playing elements and storytelling elements and the ability of player characters make choices that feel like they meaningfully impact the, the player's world. How do we take that and just rip it to shreds? Ah, uh, I know. How about a massive multiplayer version of this game? Uh, yep, Inception is the basis of all warfare. Now, Deception is the basis of all warfare is the first line of the Art of War. All Deception is based upon warfare? Depends on the, uh, depends on the translation of it, I think. I think it depends on... Like, uh... The, the way Giles translation, I think, is the oldest. God, okay, I, I gotta remember what the other uh, Mandarin to English translation is. Wade Giles. Oh, yeah, yeah. Wade Giles, if you're not aware, is a system of Romanized spelling for tra uh, transliterating. Yep, trans transliterating Chinese devised by Sarah Thomas Francis Wade from 1918 to 1985 and Herbert Allen Giles. It, it's it's garbage. Use pinyin if you're trying to translate Chinese sounding things to English, and if you're trying to translate Mandarin to English, get somebody who speaks Mandarin to do it. Alex won't upgrade his tools. Alex, uh, you know, I actually do have enough copper to upgrade my tools. I, I'm saving... I was actually just wanting to get to this point in the mines. So that I could start getting iron. So I could start building sprinklers. I don't mind having suboptimal tools. He says, slowly getting irritated at how less effective the pickaxe is. Joseph Gordon Levitt is a gift to humanity. He, I, I actually have nothing wrong with him as an actor. He, he's pretty good. I forget what the first thing I saw him in was, but. I couldn't take him seriously in Inception, I'll tell you that. I couldn't take anyone seriously in Inception, because I recognized too many of them. And the premise of Inception was fucking stupid. What if, like, you didn't know if you were dreaming, when you were dreaming, and it were like a whole second world that's so sort of like a simulation? Wouldn't that be crazy, man? Whoa, dog. This is like... Inception could have been written by 
fucking college undergraduate who is smoking weed for the first time, and I mean that sincerely. It, It's not deep, it's not nuanced, but it has the attitude that it's the craziest fucking thing that's ever been thought of. And it's such ugly, stupid pretense. No, this hoodie isn't from when I was 14. Do I have anything from when I was 14? Um. Mm, I think she's thinking about a hoodie I've had since I was like 16. But yeah, no, I don't throw clothes away. If they still fit and I still like how they look, I'm not getting rid of them. This one's from like... Uh, 2011, 2012, something like that. I, I will not apologize for that aspect of my personality. It's incredibly wasteful to change your clothing more often than the clothes wear out. Seriously, it produces incredible amounts of water waste, pollution through dye usage, supporting the fashion industry is fucking stupid and I have no interest in doing it. Buy secondhand goods. Use shit until it breaks, then fix it, then use it till it breaks, then fix it. Don't. I don't have large wardrobes. I, yeah. I do. I do look at some newer fashions and go like, "Hmm, dang." But then I also look at newer fashions and go, "Hmm, dang." I'm mostly contented. It's fucking crazy if you uh, if you look historically at how how many articles of clothing people typically wore and owned compared to the modern day, it's fucking absurd. Like, people would have two pairs of pants and four or five shirts, maybe. And those were financially decently well-off folks. Now, you have that, and people think that there's something fucking wrong with you. I have, like, a dozen pair of pants. I wear, like, three of them. <laughs> and they're all black pants, so you can't tell when I'm wearing which pair. Yeah, it's, it, uh, God, it, it was a 20th century thing, right? The, the 1960s and 70s were especially pronounced period of time where in the United States it became an increasing uh, facet of your individual identity was the way that you express that individual identity through the use of material goods, being the clothing you wore, the accessories that you decorated your home with, what brand of stove you had, what color that stove was, up until, and now the 50s. The 50s, late 50s, early 60s is when this started being a thing. Like, get your wife one of these blue stoves to show show off just what kind of person she is. Like, what? Why? Why Why a fucking blue stove? It's, it's just a stove. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. Nobody cares. Can't cut down a tree. I don't have enough energy for anything else. To bed. Pet the cat. Pet, pet the Eevee. No, it's petted. All right. To bed. It's just out of habit that I keep checking that. What's this? To the bottom. Yeah, reach the bottom of the mine. I'm working on it, dog. I'm working on it. There you are. Because it is a valid. It is a valid valid complaint that I'm not upgrading things. Uh, I need copper bars to do that, right? Not copper ore. Go ahead and smelt some more copper while I work. I'll get one upgrade the pick today. It means we're not going to the mine and Alex is just gonna have to cut down a forest or something to eat off time, but that's okay. <laughs> I do need a better pick. It's taken way too long to get stuff done in mines. I could resort to using bombs, but that's not sustainable yet. It will get sustainable, we're just not there yet. <laughs> if you want to spend several hundred dollars on blue stove, I think you deserve one. Absolutely. I think our uh, building manager might take issue with us replacing hardware, but okay, we could try. 
It'd be cool if we could get away with it. You know, they probably wouldn't mind if we talked about it with them beforehand and it were a marked upgrade over what they currently have. I've thought about that in the past. In my first apartment that I had by myself, I lived on the second floor of, a, of an aging building from the 1890s, I think it was built. It still had oil lamps, or sorry, gas lights in the house. No joke. Gas lighting was part of my original, was part of my first bachelor home. Couldn't be more perfect. Uh, which was kind of horrifying because they still worked, which meant those gas lines in the walls had been unchanged for 120 years. <laughs> uh, that house, I'm amazed I'm still alive. But I wanted to, uh, I wanted to install solar panels on the roof because I didn't like, I lived in Indiana, so most of my electricity came from coal power plants. And I wasn't really cool with that. So I was talking to them about installing solar panels. And they were like, well, you know, so long as you pay for it, we get to keep them. We guess we're fine with that. And I was like, what if like, yeah, I'll pay for them, but then you just, don't get rent for me for a while because I'm improving the property value significantly. <laughs> Needless to say, I did not install solar panels. <sighs> ah. Cora, have you ever been inside of a hollow log before? Kind of terrifying. It, it seems cool, but it's it, there's a lot of mites and ter termites, particularly, and lots of lots of creepy crawlies in there. Spiders galore, probably full of spider webs. If you're very lucky, you might find a small angry furry friend inside of there. But for the most part, it's just full of creepy crawlies and the smell of rotten mold. They look pretty, but running into them typically is not the best time. It's worth doing. It's worth doing like once or twice just to have that experience. I remember at a, at a park where I grew up, there was a hollowed out tree that still was somehow alive and Every fucking buddy took pictures of themselves inside of this hollowed out tree like, wow, isn't this so crazy? And I, I, I know I did as a kid, but as an adult, it just kind of realize how structurally <laughs> unstable that tree is. <laughs> you're posing your kids underneath it. But you're, you're small enough, you could fit in one much better than I could. It wouldn't be hard to find one. I, I guarantee we could find one very easily up here. Ooh, dang, I have zero energy. I'll go this way. Hmm. That's cute. That is very cute. I... I had squirrels living in trees that... I had, but never in hollowed out sections. I never had that cartoonish uh, vision anywhere I lived. They just lived up in the uh, canopies. We're donating. We're upgrading the pickaxe. Right, 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 right. I'm like, I'm donating a couple things and what? Hey, hey, Clint. Hey, 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 Clint. Hey. No! Oh, thank God. I thought I misclicked on the watering can. Oh, okay. All right. All right, good. <laughs> I'm like, no, fuck! My plants! You can't buy another watering pail. <laughs> I'm a monster. I should have organized these better, but that's okay. 
Yeah! Oh, your squirrels lived in a toy home that was shaped like a hollow log. Yeah! Well, that's, that's sad. Okay. <laughs> I keep forgetting that you grew up in the desert. There's a lot that I take for granted. Because I grew up in a very temperate area. I lived in a pretty cliché Middle America setting. Like, I lived in a smallish city, but not too small in a largely agrarian area in the Midwest that was supposed to be the East Coast, but not too close. Baby birds are delicious baby birds. I guess I would have to agree with that, because I eat eggs, and I generally like eggs. I actually don't like eggs as much as I used to, but I used to like eggs a lot, so... I can't disagree with that, even though I really want to disagree with that. I, yeah, around, uh, I don't know, 20, 21, I stopped liking eggs. Even, even when they're really well made, they're just kind of spongy and bleh. North Bay. Cold as ice. <laughs> I took it for granted that people grew up in places where in winter it would go below zero and it'd be normal. But, I... And I mean zero Fahrenheit, not zero Celsius. It be, being, being lower than zero Celsius should be pretty normal. But, Cora looks at me like I'm crazy whenever I talk about it being normal. I uh, yeah, you just have feet of snow outside and have to go to school anyway. <laughs> and yeah, there's tornadoes and thunderstorms and you just have to go to school anyway. Yeah, I grew up in Lafayette, Indiana. In West Lafayette, Indiana. I was born in Kentucky, but I'm not going to say where exactly. But it wasn't Louisville. <laughs> I'll tell you that much. It was not Louisville. I lived in Milford, Connecticut for a couple of years. Right on the coast. That was very pretty. Why do I have no money? Oh, I just paid for the pickaxe. Yeah, yeah. God, I'm paying attention. <laughs> I just fumbled through uh, 245, 234, 234, looking like, where's my pickaxe? Where's my pickaxe? Boy, ain't right. Boy, ain't right. Oslo, as in like Norway, or Oslo named after Norway? Yuma, yeah, I, I've driven through Yuma quite a few times. Ah, okay, Oslo, Norway. Yeah, 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 okay, okay. I'm trying to remember where Oslo is. Oslo's on the. I almost said the west coast of Norway. While technically correct, about 90% of Norway is the west coast of Norway. <laughs> I I know where Oslo is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, uh, here. Norway is very pretty. I would I would very much like to be able to visit Scandinavia during the summer. What is it? Uh, June or July is Scandinavian summer, right? Or at least it's Swedish summer where nobody goes to work. I would love to visit during that time. 
Yeah, I, it's uh, it's about as temperate there as Canada or parts of the northern United States. Southern Canada, I should say, or northern United States. It's surprising. It, it does have the reputation of being frozen wasteland in parts of Norway and Sweden definitely are, but not all of it. The same way that we Americans are like, ah, there's nothing in Canada but snow and moose and syrup and hockey players, which, you know, technically correct with respect to certain parts of Canada, but the populated sections of Canada that's certainly not true of. Man, that's gonna be intimidating, having a father-in-law who doesn't speak English. Just like, it, it can be scary enough meeting your significant other's parents when they speak the same language as you, but for me that would be a little intimidating. Um, no, 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 no. Hold on. Communicate through food and drinking. There are worse ways to communicate. That's not bad. Uh, six? Let's, let's start slapping some shit together. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five. And uh, number six up here. This one, right at the top, I'm gonna make gray. And this is where anything that I can smell or anything related to smelting will go. You got anything related to smelting? Nope. Yeah. This. This. That. That. Not really related. Can't smell to it. Can't smell to it. No. Earth crystal? Can you can you smell earth crystal? I know you can smell quartz, which is why I picked it up. We'll, we'll throw it in here. Can't do that. Okay, this one's just gonna be this dark gray color. The dark gray one gets rock, and only rock. Rock me on it is. Just yeah, get rid of this shit I don't want, sell the grapes, sell this. I'm going to paint this one gold, and the reason this one is gold is anything of a gold coverage gets put in there. Coverage gold ranking gets put in there. This, uh, let's just make this one brown. Brown, 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 brown orange. Orange? Sure, orange, and it can just have all the groundy stuff. Give me all this. Give me that. Excellent. Okay, you get this. None of this. No, 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 no. Yes. No, no. Fuck it. I can put the minerals in here too. Whatever. This makes it easier to keep track of. Put minerals in here. I put you in here. You in here. You in here. You, in here. you, 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 and you in here. Oh, and hardwood definitely goes in here. And let's make this one. Purple. Purple means monsters. We put the monster goop in there. Annabelle and Melody Stalin. Annabelle and Melody are very nice names. Excellent, excellent names. And now, what do I do with these chests? <laughs> I don't know, but I can't pick them up. I can! Okay, the axe breaks them too. This has shit in it? Yeah, it does. Okay. Okay, okay so that goes in here. Then I want one of these just for tools. You a tool? No. Will you count a tool? This is for tools. We'll make it white. Uh, tools, 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 tools. These are future seeds, which is why they're in here. This, I'm just, I don't, I don't fucking know. Go, go in the toolbox. Go in the toolbox. There we go. I'm feeling much better organized now. Doesn't seem like a big deal, but if that saves me with fumbling with things even a little bit, that is worth it. That's what DMs are for. Your great-grandmother is going to have great-great-grandkids? That's insane! That's got to feel like winning, winning at evolution, right? 
having kids, you've succeeded at evolution. Grandkids, it's like getting an A. Great grandkids, it's like being top of your class. Great great grandkids, you're like the alma mater. Or not alma mater, uh, sorry, the uh, fuck. It means the best student, you are the... Up of grat the cum laude. Yeah, 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 cum laude. She's only eighty-seven. Ah, okay. I didn't read any of that. Tomorrow we're gathering at the beach for the annual Pelican Town Lau Luau. Ah, yeah, white people <laughs> celebrating a luau. Definitely want to be a part of that. No, oh, thank you. I don't want a part of your cultural appropriation party. Most of my family's pretty young. For the mo I, I think I'm the oldest in a while to not have kids. Now my sister's older than I am, but our parents had us while we were still in college. And their parents had us, or had them, had us, yeah, I got some real fucked up stuff there. No, their parents had them right out of college, and their parents had them right out of college. Now, my great aunt is my, my great grand aunt? My great aunt, I, I don't remember. She's my oldest living relative at 97. I was, I was talking with, uh, with somebody in the last few weeks about this. About just age and how it's a real fucking trip. At, at 20 something at 26. I'm a good third of the way through my life with the average life expectation of men in the United States. It's kind of nuts. Like, for the first 10 years, I might as well have not been alive. And then the next 10 years, I was alive and kind of aware of it, but was bitter because I didn't really have much autonomy. Now I'm just getting out of that phase where I feel like, oh, I have a little bit of autonomy and I'm trying to make peace with how little control I have over my life and the world around me and I'm trying to find meaning and an inherently meaningless existence and etc 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 I mean you all know the drill and then I guess you know after about 10 years of this I'll probably settle into a new phase it's just fucking weird people who are 40 you're talking about turning 40 or 50 I I really have to fight the urge to be like how are you doing with that like how, how, how are you feeling with you know five-sevenths of your life gone, or four-sevenths of your life gone, and like, you're halfway there, buddy, how you doing? I like, I, it's an uncomfortable question, but I genuinely want to know what that's like. I, uh, hopefully I'll find out one day. <laughs> I'm, I guess I could ask my parents, but I, I don't want to be like, Hey, Mom and Dad, what's it like being closer to being dead? It's, 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 it's not something you say in polite company. I want to read something that someone has written about it. I want I want art and literature about this subject, not to force poor people to come to terms with their mortality for my benefits. Some old folks love talking. Yeah, you're not wrong. Back when I was in college and lived in Arizona, uh, the majority of the town's population are over the age of 60. It's largely a retirement community. I had a great time going to the bank and just sitting down with old people and talking about their lives while waiting for <laughs> service. Oh yeah, you was going to ranch up in here and back then it was like da 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 da. Yeah. As a, as a history student or curator or anyone interested in history, you're going to be talking to old people. You're going to be talking to a lot of old people. If you don't like people, you don't like old people, dog, history is not for you. Because old people are a wealth of information. A wealth of good information.
Though you do have to keep in mind that maybe sometimes they don't remember uh, exactly how things went. They just remember sort of how things went. That's still really valuable. You know what? Let's start making iron bars. As soon as this is done, and by this is done, I mean this will be done tomorrow, I want to be able to upgrade the iron... I don't have enough money. What am I talking about? I was about to say, I want to be able to upgrade the iron pickaxe to... or the copper pickaxe to an iron pickaxe as soon as it's done. And well, I, I'm poor. I will not have enough money to do that in a long time. Well, we do live in a larger city as well, so randomly striking up conversations with people in a larger metropolitan area tends to be seen as a bit more invasive than it is in the rest of the country, or in more rural areas. Now I'm sure there's a decent amount of literature out there written by older folks talking about coming to terms with mortality and yada yada yada. Ugh. So I'm sure if I actually put any amount of effort into seeking it out, I could find it. But now it's more just like whimsically, vaguely, passively interested rather than actively interested in it. It's a, almost 11. Yeah, so we can get another hour in tonight. Are we two cohabitators? We, we do cohabitate, yes. Yeah. Cora's about three feet away from me right now. I, she, she is actually the reason I don't like streaming after midnight because I like saying goodnight in person and not being loud and heard through the walls. I have made damn good efforts to soundproof this little recording studio and it's a lot better than it was, but it, it's not quite there yet. I still feel self-conscious about recording while she's trying to sleep. <laughs> She's 30 feet away, not 3 feet away from me in Twitch chat. Twitch chat, because I'm in a tiny box of a room. She can't be watching and listening to what I'm doing. Not comfortably, anyway. We try to do things in here, uh, stream in here, watch movies in here, but it's, it's really small. Like, the wall is right here. <laughs> this, is, this is a green screen, but this is also a wall, like, a foot behind me. And immediately behind my desk is another wall. There's like, I'm touching one wall, I'm touching the other wall. I record in a small box. Feels super accusatory tone when you say cohabitators. <laughs> They're married and they live together. They're not married and they live together. My god. Alert the abbot. Have these sinners purge from our town in no time. <laughs> I've tried to uh, encourage Cora to stream on her own. Watching her make art can be very cool. And she's working on a lot of really cool uh, projects right now. Some she can't show, obviously, because She's a, she's a graphic designer because she is working on contract, but she's also working on this really, really exciting coloring book, like a adult coloring book. Not adult as in risque, but that'd be, that'd be something. Uh, adult as in for adults coloring book that's really fucking cool and pretty dang fun to watch her work on. Alex is in his closet. Yep. <laughs> That's why it gets so fucking hot in here. Hmm. Alright, so I don't need to push on getting a lot of iron today. I could sell all the wood I'm cutting and probably make a decent amount, but... Let's not rush. There's plenty of time. Old man grandpa can... Old ghost grandpa can get mad at us, but we, we got time. 
I really hate the lightning strikes right now because there is a non-zero chance that those are destroying my crops. this farm. It's it's weird because it's so small I'm used to having a, a lot more room to play around with but this isn't bad. I'm not finding it challenging yet. Given that we got ancient seeds already I probably won't find it very challenging in the long run because I'll just transition to growing ancient fruit all the time but I dig it. Yeah. It's remarkable how few people are from uh, traditionally approved of unions, if you will. Like, my parents got married because they got knocked up in college. And they came from Christian families, so they stuck together because of that for the most part. And, you know, plenty of people are bastards, literal bastards. Ain't nothing wrong with that. I, this is a boulder? This is either a boulder or a meteorite, I can't tell. Huh. But... Yeah, I've never really thought it strange when people come from non-traditional homes. I've actually thought it was weirder when I've met people who are like, Oh yeah, we fell in love, and then we got married, and then we had kids, and like, we didn't live together or do anything until we were married. It's like, what? What do you mean you didn't bone outside of marriage? How, how could you tell that you actually were compatible? I, I don't understand. Yeah, it, it, uh, I had the same experience of not being 100% on what bastard meant for way too long when I was a kid. And also, it being used as a curse is pretty shitty, right? Like, ha! Huh. Your parentage, which is something you have zero control over, is something that's considered dishonorable in our society. Ha ha! What the fuck? <laughs> it's really bad. Calling someone a coward, or uh, a sloth, or mean, or spiteful, or sadistic, or stupid, you know, those are all things that the person has ownership of. But calling him a bastard is just... awful. <laughs> yeah. There's nothing wrong with it. There's absolutely nothing wrong with falling in love and then getting married. There's nothing wrong with getting married because you feel like you should for the health of the kids and then leaving after the kids have formed the coop. There's nothing wrong with having kids with someone and then separating. It really... All relationships, so long as they're consensual and respectful, are fine. Again, just the golden rule. Don't be a dick. <laughs> Follow that, and we good. I don't want the bonsai tree. Put the bonsai tree back. I wanted to pet the cat and go to bed. Okay, this is the end of another hour. I'm gonna see a poultry sum down here. I'm going to keep streaming for one more hour, but until then, if you were watching on Twitch, ain't nothing going to change, I'm going to keep streaming. If you're watching on YouTube, you're going to have to wait until tomorrow. Until then, make sure to comment, share, like, subscribe, etc, etc, etc on Twitch, Twitter, YouTube, Alexander and Codex on all the things. You know the deal. Doodle-oo.